Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. My name is Garrett Hartle. This is Reach Out Reptile, and you're tuning in for Talk Em Up Tuesday. This week, we're gonna talk with venomous reptile keeper, Greg Madden. Check it out. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, this is pretty cool. We're here with Greg Madden today, and so we're going to talk about what you want to talk about. Venomous stuff? Yeah, of course. Venomous. Yeah, all about, man. Very cool. Very <laughs> cool. All right. Well, uh, first question I always like to ask, just so everybody can kind of get to know why the heck we're talking anyways. How did we meet? How did we meet? It's an interesting story. <laughs> it was, uh, we didn't actually meet, but... Uh, Something happened on one of those wannabe BOI sites. Oh, social media. Yeah. Social uh, media buddies. Somebody was tearing you up over the way you packaged your stuff, and it was actually like the best packaging I've ever seen. Wow, oh, thank Where you. People <laughs> shit out. Somebody actually had a problem with it. I was just reading, and I'm like, are they kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is like, you know, you're opening up a package from you, it's like getting a Christmas present in the mail. Yeah. You know, well, I like people had so. a problem with it, but. Yeah. Uh, I think I think what it was is I, I try to put together really like pretty packaging, you know. And most of my reasoning behind it is you build as much sentimental value as you can into the animal, and then the animal itself has the best chance to be appreciated. It's new right. home, not flipped and sold, or you know, think of, thought of as a dollar figure or something. Right. Yeah. But uh, so, just that it's something special. So and it's just a, you know, if you put that much time and effort into your packaging then your animals got to be outstanding too. Right, so right. I think I think what they were trying to say was basically if it's pretty it can't be functional. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> but it it can be both. It can be Absolutely. Both. Hey, I like that. Thank you very much for jumping on there. I appreciate it. You got it bro. <laughs> so, yeah, if you guys ever see people ragging on me, you can jump on there too. <laughs> right? What would you consider your specialty kind of niche? As far as reptiles go, um, it's definitely um, venomous, and then more particularly the uh, African vipers. Okay, see that's where I was getting at, because a lot of people I think say venomous, but venomous that's like saying non-venomous, right? right? Well, so the ge leopard geckos, ball yeah. pythons, or it's a million different. Things. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm not into every venomous species. I'm, yeah, my sites are more focused on, you know, the three main large bitter species and okay. uh, the smaller atheris. Okay. The bush vipers. So the bush vipers right. and the gaboons and yes. the rhinos and stuff like that. Yep. It's pretty cool when you can specialize to that point because I think like take rhino vipers. I, I think a lot of venomous keepers might have one group of them, you know, or one pair of them, and right. maybe I'll breed them someday. But uh, I don't know if you if you start getting into specializing in something like that, you begin to have different strains, different lines. This colors. Breeding right. towards uh, red, this one toward the black, yeah. this one this, this and one that. with the stuff like bitters, it all depends <clears throat> on the locality from you know what part of Africa they come from. Because the western rhino vipers are going to look different than the ones from the eastern side, and same thing with the gaboons and the puff adders is, you know, I mean they're spread across all of Africa, and each locality they all have massive different differences. Attributes. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, like how different they can look. And supposedly they're all the same species, but I think they're going to be looking into it more and. Yeah. They're probably going to find out that there's more than just like now, one or two species of puff adder. He he doesn't remember. He's talking about we met because of this packaging thing online. <laughs> and I'm not reminding him either. But I actually contacted him fairly recently, but it was over a year ago, I think, asking about bush vipers. Yes, you did. I remember seeing him. Because he was bringing a whole bunch of bush viper stuff in and I was going... <laughs> like, I don't know what it is. I got a soft spot for the bush vipers. I was telling them I want like a giant display. They all have to have the bright green eyes, and then I want a blue one, a yellow one, a red one. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. just like a Crayola cram box. They're incredible. Of yeah, little, uh, little bush vipers. You know, yeah, and it's, I, it's funny too because that's the uh, Atheris squamagera, and they only come in that color variety from the Congo. Really? Any, any place outside of the Congo, they're just basically green. Really? Back and forth. Would yeah, you actually, consider I them like a semi-arboreal then? Or um, I mean, they I mean, do, they do spend a lot of time on the ground. Um, 
but I would say that they're more semi arboreal and not strict arboreal. You always see pictures of them like set up on branches because for photography. Because they look, they look nice a lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that, that may not necessarily be the way that that's they're not best how kept. Always, I've got it. I have a couple of specimens that spend 90% of the time on the ground. Wow. So. Huh. Yep. Crazy. The big fat ones. <laughs> I, I would I would be one of those <laughs> specimens. Yeah, I would be the ground dweller one for sure. That's more my style. What would you say is your most favorite and least favorite part of the reptile industry, you know, as you deal with it? Um, my obviously the most favorite part of the industry for me is the actual animals. Okay. You know, they, just spending uh, time with the animals. Yeah, themselves. I mean, that's like, I, mean, I do this for me. I don't do it for anybody else. You know. That sounds like so, a venomous keeper. Yeah. Too. <laughs> so uh, I mean, the animals are, are number one in my book, man. You know, it's like my favorite part of the hobby. Um, being able to help people learn is another favorite part of my what I do in this hobby, and learning is also a big thing. Cause like, don't matter who you are, how long you've been doing this, there's no way you know everything. Yeah. You know, so you just constantly got to learn. And yeah. the more you learn, the more you evolve as a keeper and the better you can keep your animals. I'm a big believer in you should always be mentoring someone and being mentored yep. at the same time. If you don't have those two things, your life gets out of balance pretty yeah. quick. And it's crazy, too. I mean, you can learn stuff <clears throat> from even the most unlikely sources, man. I mean, you can get tips and different ways to do things, even from people who just started. Yeah. Know? So exactly. it's like, it, you know, so that goes into my least favorite thing is people who think that they're better than the next guy because they keep venomous. Huh. Because you know? specifically because they, they keep venomous. Yeah I, mean, they they say some, yeah, I mean, some people think they're they're an elite type, you know, they, they're better than, you know, I've been keeping venomous for longer than you've been keeping anything, but it doesn't really matter what you're keeping, it's how you're keeping it. And to me, like a lot of people that think they're above everybody else, somebody comes in new and they're asking they're asking questions. Some people like that's a stupid question. Why are you asking questions? If you gotta ask a question like that, you shouldn't be looking into it. But the only stupid question is the one you don't ask, especially when you're dealing with animals that can potentially kill you. You definitely have a whole different way of keeping when you keep venomous too. I mean, there's, there's a lot more precaution involved, but it's not hard to do. You know? Yeah, you don't have to be a rocket science. You just have to have common sense and a little bit of knowledge of how to use the tools. You just got to be very mindful. Like if you if you're having a bad day at work and your snakes crap up the uh, cages, like or you're having a bad day at work, or you don't you know you fight with your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whoever you're with, it's just not a good idea to go near the animals. You know, so that pile of crap that'll be there tomorrow when you have a clear head to be able to go in and deal with it. You're having a bad day, you just don't go near them, you know? You know, it's interesting <laughs> that that, like, as a, if you're not a venomous keeper, that those kind of thoughts don't even cross your mind. Right. I'm sure you guys who are watching can, can attest to this. You make a mistake. And then you're like, you know what, I should probably learn that. And you go try to study about it afterwards. You don't want to figure out how you're going to get treated for a bite from that animal <laughs> until after you get bit. Right. So you think that stuff out in advance, hoping that it never happens, yeah. you know, and so much of the learning is learning how to prevent what could possibly go wrong. Yep. Whereas the rest of us, I sometimes feel like a, a lot of us reptile keepers are fumbling around in the dark, trial by error, like, whoops, I killed that one, let's start again. You know what I mean? We'll learn what did it, you do that with Venomous, and you're the one who dies. Yeah, it could definitely cost your mm -hmm. life a well, limb at the very least, you know, I mean, you can lose parts of your body that you don't want right, to just have a nice yeah an, <laughs> an unpleasant week all right so i have a little icebreaker question for you right, ready it, yeah. tell me what is your guilty pleasure you know <laughs> but I, but i don't want just like you know guilty pleasure like oh I, you know i like to wear clean socks or something i want <laughs> i want you to dig a little bit deeper and share with us something that uh as a as a tough uh you know venomous keeper you know you might not want us to know oh. that you like but you do I mean, you do. What is it that you like? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a good one. I like a lot of things. Yeah? Okay, yeah, here we go. But, uh, what I really, really like to do, I like to cook. You like to cook? I love cooking, man. Okay. I love cooking. What do you like to cook? Anything and everything, man. I'm like 
I can chef you up whatever you want, man. Really? Yeah, yeah, man. I you like got any good vegan recipes? I'm not a vegan, dude. Oh, uh, you gotta figure that out. <laughs> it makes a, a lot. I like to cook too. I like but vegetables, it... but I like meat too. Man. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, I think you might need to branch out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Step up. Us vegans, you know, we're like the venomous keepers of the eating world. You know? are, man. Yeah, everyone thinks like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I no, I mean, vegan is, uh, it's definitely something you got to be dedicated to. Oh, well, sure. You know? So is venomous. See? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Really? Absolutely. We're tracking. Yeah. But I, I'm, a, I'm, a big, I'm a big meat eater, man. I like meat. I mean, I, was I don't, there. I was I don't there. eat as much as I used to. You know? I'll, uh... I'll keep, what are you saying over there? <laughs> Andrew Acevedo. We're it's filming Andrew, over here. Andrew Just because your episode is done doesn't mean you can ruin everybody else's. <laughs> um, All right, well, I got, I got one more question go for you then. Okay, so people want to get a hold of you. I mean, I know I saw you through Facebook, and there's a lot of really nice eye candy on Greg Madden's. Is that just a personal page, right? That's my personal page, yeah. So how also, else can we reach out to um, you? I have an Instagram page with some more pictures of some of my stuff on What is there. that? Um, what, if they were to follow you on set. It's uh, Viper Greg 1975. Viper Greg 1975. Yes, and um, I also have... Uh, Viper page on Facebook. It's called Greg's African Vipers page. Greg's African Vipers. It's Greg with two G's at the end. Greg. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, thank you very much for thank coming. Thank you. On. It was a pleasure. All right, it was great. Thanks for bringing out some of those gorgeous animals. I mean, you guys are are missing out because you're on that side of the lens. On this <laughs> side, those things are. Just stunning. Yeah, Just man, stunning. It was definitely a pleasure. And, man. What a great guy. What a great time. Fantastic animals. Kind of makes you think. I can tell you, Greg could be a very bad influence on me and probably a lot of you too as well. Well, I have some tragic news. I have no new stickers. No new stickers for my filing cabinet. Now, if you guys want to shoot me out a sticker for my filing cabinet, I will slap it right on there somewhere and give you a shout out right here on Reach Out Reptile. So be sure to shoot them out. But for right now, I wanted to rep this phase. This is actually the company of my, at the time, 14-year-old cousin. Uh, stands for Pythons Helping a Student's Education. And uh, this is my cousin, Jeremy Fink. He's on Facebook. He breeds ball pythons. And then he also uh, works with a network of top-notch breeders just to bring really cool animals to people because of everybody that he knows and working those connections, man. So he's doing a really good job. And like the, the name suggests, puts all his money towards his college education. So it's pretty cool. You might want to check him out. Have a great week.